Hello, lovelies. Welcome to Horror 421, the podcast, with your host, your friendly small-town horror author, Charles Campbell. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the frights in this week's episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another another episode of Horror 421, the podcast. I'm your host, small town horror author, Charles Campbell, and I'm super excited today. Uh, I have a very special guest. She was on our podcast a couple of years ago, and uh, I'm so happy that we have her back uh, for this season. Uh, she was the star of the movie Siren, and before that, she was the star of the movie VHS, one of the stars. And uh, she's an amazing actress, and she has done so much more than this. Let me tell you, one of the one of my favorite movies of hers is called Hold Me, and that's a drama, and I love it so much. I've seen it a couple times, but anyway, welcome to the show, Hannah Fearman. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm excited to see you again. I didn't oh. realize it had been two years. Yeah, yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. You've done so much since then. I was telling Hannah before we got on air that she's done so much i've taken so many notes that i don't even know where to start i know where she wants to go so we will go there very soon but a <laughs> uh, couple things uh she does have a movie out uh that you can go see right now it's called i'll be watching i watched the trailer for it and wow i'm gonna watch it i'm gonna watch it probably today um and it's kind of like if you were trapped in a smart house with someone in there with you is, is that kind of the vibe of the movie yeah, yeah. It was uh, written and produced by Sarah Samedi Michaels, and it is uh, star. Uh, the cast is fantastic. Um, uh, but um, Seth Michaels is one of the stars in it as well, and he was my televangelist. Oh, um, yeah. So we can okay. bring it back in. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. That is amazing. Well, Hannah has done so much. You know, so much in the two years that uh, we've talked, she's produced all kinds of things. Uh, she's produced a creature feature called Bunker Heights, which will be out soon, maybe? No, it'll probably be next year. Oh, um, next year? I'd, okay. Yeah, I'd imagine probably early next year. Um, we are moving really fast with it, though, but it's just a couple of us, so... Oh, okay yeah. well there's a trailer out there for it i watched the trailer uh she's all, also is an actress in it and she produces it and she's produced all kinds of stuff um a couple weeks ago i watched the movie late checkout and you caught my eye immediately because it's it, you it listed you as one of the producers so i was like oh my gosh she's into everything so yeah yeah <laughs> that was fun that was a fun movie to watch i recently watched that um and yeah i was originally cast in it but i had an emergency and wasn't able to do it and um, but I had helped out with uh, some of the I think I, I think I helped out with the casting and um, getting some of the investors. Uh, so they they actually it was more of like a honorary thing because I, I had helped so much, but I didn't get to act in it. They're like, would you like to be a producer? And I was like, that's so sweet of you. Yeah. All right. Sure. Sure. Well, we're going to get into your directing a little bit because you have an amazing knack for that, too. You're multi-talented. Um so I watched Dead by Midnight, Why to Kill today, and we'll talk about that a little bit, and then we'll get into Dark Circles. But uh, Hell Evangelist is the piece you directed. Uh, can you tell the audience a little bit about Dark Circles, the the anthology, and the piece you directed? Because I want to talk about a couple of those things. It, it was hilarious. I was laughing throughout the whole thing. Yeah, you, you mean Dead by Midnight, the anthology. Yeah, de yeah, Dead by, yeah. Mid yeah, Dead by Midnight. Uh, why to kill is what I yeah. think it says. Yeah. Yeah. And Hell, Hell Evangelist was your episode. That's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, um, okay. So this is a funny story. Uh, after I did Siren, what I think it was the IT guy, uh, Tony Remus, he, um, we chatted quite a bit on set. And uh, after we filmed Siren, he wanted me to do an anthology called Dead by Midnight, 11 p.m. Central. He wanted me to act in it. And, um, we had so much fun doing that movie that they decided to do a sequel and they called me up and they're just like, you want to act in it. And, um, at that time I, I was married to, uh, Josh Wilcox, who is a very, very talented writer. And so I brought it up to them. I was just like, Hey, how about Josh writes a segment? Um, and they were like, well, actually, yes. 
And also <laughs> we want it, we want you to direct one. And so Josh and I wrote the segment Hell Evangelist together. It was my idea and he really, you know, fleshed it out. And um and so Dead by Midnight, White to Kill came out before Dead by Midnight, 11 p.m. Central. So I'm not even sure if Dead by Midnight, 11 p.m. Central, which was the first anthology that I was talking about that I acted in. I, I'm not sure if it'll ever come out, but this is technically a, a sequel. sequel. Oh, <laughs> yeah. wow. That's crazy because I, I watched this on Amazon today. I, po I popped it up and I, I actually bought it and then I sat down and watched it and you drove the movie i mean you were like the narrator through the whole thing you had little funny segments um i thought you were great so yeah. um the the granny and hell evangelist that was a very well written story so if you wrote that i give you all the credit in the world i thought it was fantastic and kind of the way she you know helped her family by doing some things she shouldn't have done well maybe she should have hell i don't know but uh <laughs> it, it, it was it was a very fun watch so um, are there any interesting stories from being on that set and filming that and being behind the lens? Uh, I, I know when we talked last, you were talking that you were getting into directing and, and we're looking forward to doing that sort of stuff. So do you have anything to share? You know, how has it been different behind the camera instead of in front of the camera? Well, it was it was nerve wracking at very first. But then after the first day, um, me and Sarah Samedi Michaels again, she wrote um, the movie that's that you just watched. I'll be watching. I'll be Oh, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the one that I'm going to watch. Yeah. Uh, the other you're going to watch, yeah. Yep. 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 It's, I'll be watching. Uh, it's okay, the, so, the smart house movie. <laughs> right. So I acted. Yeah. So she was my producer. Um, we were at Fright Fest in London and we were there with this movie called St. Agatha that we'd done back in 2017. And we were hanging out, having lunch. And I was just like, Hey, would you produce this for me? And she was just like, absolutely. I would love to. And I was like, cool. And her husband is Seth Michaels. And, um, I was, I was just like, do you think Seth would be interested in playing the televangelist in the segment? And she was like, I'm sure, I'm sure he'd love it. And so that's how I got them on board. And, um, the lead actress, the, the beautiful, um, lady Marilyn light, I met her on the set of St. Agatha. So, that that was yeah that was just like a wealth of of wonderful people that i met it was, on Saint yeah. yeah well yeah it was it was an amazing short i loved it and and the whole movie was great and you your parts were certainly excellent and you kind of drove it because you kind of narrated you know and, and brought each short uh to the eyes of the people but uh that that jasper i don't know if you watched that uh that was another short in the movie with the that cartoon was, um... character oh my god that was so funny that was Bill Mosley. Jasper? Oh, that he played Jasper? Yeah. Oh, my God. That was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, they were all good. All the stories were good. Clean your room. And the little, uh, you know, fake commercials you had through there. Kane Hodder and Murder <laughs> All. The commercials were my favorite part. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Murder All. You know, that's what you yeah. take when you don't want to kill people. So uh, it was loved. it, And, you know, you also got to have the bag of dicks. <laughs> that, oh my gosh um, that's Dabby uh, crimmins and she stole the the movie for me with that bag of dicks and i didn't uh, even think it was funny like i didn't think the trope was funny until i saw her deliver it and i was just like that is, that's brilliant <laughs> i love you it was all in the delivery but it was hilarious yeah. yeah i mean she drove me crazy watching that stuff that was amazing <laughs> all right we're gonna get off dead by midnight uh and we're gonna get to something you want to talk about today uh dark circles i've been waiting on pins and needles since she first told us about it and i watched the trailer again today and um you know uh, felissa rose stars in it and i you know i hear that are you here martin in my head over and over again tell the audience a little bit about dark circles how you got that put together and you know you said we can expect it this year so i don't want to pin you down on an exact date but let's talk about that movie tell me what entailed putting this thing together Okay, so it's been a really long time coming. It was uh, a brainchild of Damien Maffei, who is the lead actor, and um, the the screenplay writer is Brian Fitzpatrick. And it's about it's about a, a misanthropic a peeping Tom who um, r runs into a great deal of trouble. Um, he he peeps on the wrong people, and um, 
basically it's just like a it's a psychological horror thriller and and you go on this journey with with Damien's character Martin Malone and and you sort of figure things out with him and that's what I like so much about this story is it's a very it's a very personal perspective and it kind of remind me reminded me a little bit of like the only thing that I could think of was sort of stir of echoes do you remember that movie oh yeah 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 it's a good where movie. you're like going through yeah. the the motions with um who was that Kevin Bacon Kevin Bacon yep yeah and you're just like is it nuts or you know um is there something what's in the wall um so <laughs> yeah I watched that a few times before I started directing and uh yeah Phyllis is in it um oh, she she did an incredible job we got Terry Kaiser in it and that man is a talent machine like I gave him so much to do and he didn't miss a beat. And wow. I, I just got, I, he's like, you know, I, I don't know how old he is, but like he memorized pages and pages and pages and pages of monologue and just delivered it over and over again, lots of different ways, lots of different options. He totally made the movie. And um, yeah, I got to brag on the man. I'm, I'm so impressed with him. He was just like, hey, I want another one. I got a different take. You know, I was like, sure. Yeah, <laughs> you got one more and you absolutely let's go. Um, yeah. And he actually like hung around and came to set when he wasn't even in the scenes because he was just like really happy to be there. And uh, that, was, that was thrilling working with him. And uh, let me think, who else? Who else is in it? Uh, Kamara Cole, who I had worked with prior. Um, to this on a movie called Time's Up, which is a slasher. And who else? Topher Hansen was my uh was was my uh, AD, my assistant director, and he also played one of the characters in the movie and he totally slayed. It was he's like kind of the comic relief, like the the skeezy little guy <laughs> at the office. And oh, it was great. It was really hard to direct that day because he's my AD and he was acting in the scene, but he, he really killed it well you know you're and and i'm kind of a fanboy anyway i i, I love what you do um and so i don't want to fanboy too much but uh the difference between acting and directing what are some of the hurdles and challenges you faced uh getting behind the camera what are some of the you know biggest challenges you had in adjusting to uh telling people what to do on set well it turns out i'm a natural at bossing people around i didn't know it <laughs> I didn't know I had him, but I, I I honestly didn't need to give that much direction because we selected the the actors so carefully that um that I mean especially Damien like he knew the character so well that there was there was very little direction that I gave him. I mean I'm trying to remember. I mean, there was a few times obviously nobody's perfect, but um. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it was, I just, I had a really good cast, so it, the movie made itself, I feel like. Well, that, that's, um, that's great, you know, <laughs> uh, it, it, you know, if, if you're fortunate enough to have everyone in sync, that that's awesome. I've talked to a few directors that didn't always have that. <laughs> no, I, no, I was really lucky, and, um, you know, it, it was, it was a very low budget movie, and I think, I think the total we ended up having was something like, 76,000 77 including all of the posts that I had to I had right. to get the money for after the fact um it, yeah it just it looks a hell of a lot better than than a movie of that budget and that's because like so many people pitched in for free we got uh Dan Kearney was one of our producers he got all of these beautiful locations for free and it turns out that he's like he's like the cousin of everybody in this town in Connecticut <laughs> like everybody's nice. cousin I unless they're his dad you know and and uh so everybody everybody loves him so they all came out for him and you know we had the postman and we had the, the college and we had you know everything for free it was unbelievable all these extras for free uh people that wanted to pa people actually paid to pa and it, it nice. was a, yeah it was a very different experience for me um because i i'm not used to uh, that kind of um, that kind of film, that kind of film setup, but uh, but it worked. It ended up working because everybody involved um, added something of, of extreme value. Uh, like you know, Felissa with all of her knowledge of like 
um, getting financing together and her just being so bold about, um, about talking to people about money. Like I, I learned a lot from her uh, as far as that's concerned, because I grew up in this kind of like um, world where we're talking about money was taboo, you know, yeah. and it, it was, it always made me so uncomfortable and she did it with such ease. And I was just like, yeah, why, why am I so made so uncomfortable by, by talking about money and asking for financing for something that I know is going to be absolutely something that they will be proud of. And uh, yeah, so she got me over that. And um, so that was amazing. And plus she, when she acted in it, she, she really, I mean, she threw everything oh, in there. You're going to love amazing. it. She's amazing. I love Felissa. She was in You're late gonna checkout. Love it. I'm going to watch it. And I'm, yeah, you know, yeah. if it's available on Blu-ray or DVD or whatever, I'll plunk down my dollars to pick it up. But uh, yeah, I'm so, pr I'm so proud of you for it. Um, I know it's been your baby for a while. Um, is there one thing that sticks out in your head about it coming together? Is there like an ah, ha moment, you know, once it's done, is there something that uh, really, is there something that really touched you when you said, wow, I did this and it's going to come out? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's been a couple of those and most of them have been in post. Um, actually, all of them have been in post right. because while I was filming, I didn't have time to think, but um, except for every now and then there'd be a take where I would I was just like, well, that's a keeper, you know. Um, but with post, uh, for example, our our composer is this brilliant man named Alexander Taylor, and um, d doing the score with him was true pleasure. Like it was just like, uh, I don't know, we communicated so well artistically. Like I would say the most obscure stuff. Like I'd be like, can I just? I want to be able to smell the stink coming out of that band aid. You know, I, I would say stuff like that, and he'd be like exactly what you mean and and you know it was, it was just nice like we, we got this like after a while i mean it took a second i was intimidated um to, but you to formed try the to chemistry talk. you formed yeah, the chemistry we, we, yeah immediately we, we we formed this this language um that was just ours and nice. uh yeah it was great and i mean my director of photography it was the same way with him it was just like after we called each other quite a bit before we started filming got a shot list together and everything and we by the time we got on set we had our own language and i was just like yeah i want you to 12 monkeys it over here and you know do the and <laughs> you know basically speaking in sign language and and it, it made it so much easier to have to have that that connection already that that communication already yeah well i'm i'm so happy for you i really am um and when i watched the trailer um I actually want to go to a movie theater and see that. I mean, I, it looked like something that I would need to go. I, I would love to sit in a theater and watch that movie. It looks so good. Um, so, you know, kudos to you. You have Thank a top notch, is. top notch cast. So I'm excited to see it. I'm excited to see it too. in my yeah, audience. I'm, be excited I'm hoping, to see it. Sorry, I keep interrupting you. I'm hoping you that know. maybe we'll, if, if we don't get it in the theaters, which is highly unlikely, but, but um, I, I'm going to, I'm going to at least uh, have have some screenings because I've yeah. got to see it on the big screen. It's just that beautiful. Um, Jan Michael Losada and his team um, shot it. It was it was a three man team, our our um, our camera department. And uh, it's just so pretty. And they did it so quickly. And it was it was pretty magical. Yeah, yeah well, well, I'm excited for it. So audience make sure you check out dark circles it will be out uh sometime this year like i said i don't want to pin hannah down on a date she's like she actually you know agreed to do this podcast and we we're going to talk about dark dark circles and we kept moving the date a little bit to try to match a release date but uh we're going to talk about it here and when it comes out we're going to talk about it again or i'm going to talk about it and let you guys know to go see it wherever you can find it Thank um you. i want to backtrack a little bit now you've done a lot of you know film work and movies but uh something that we didn't really touch on too much a couple of years ago was you were on creep show the television series and i want to know what your experience there was like versus you know a filming a movie you know how was it to how was it to be on the the creep show the television set and uh, how was it working on that series oh it was it was absolute pleasure i did two um two seasons of creep show and uh the the first season that I did was the second season of mm -hmm. um, the, the new creep show television show. And then I was on the, also on the third and uh, it was okay. So creep show was kind of unusual um, 
as far as uh, TV goes, because it is much more laid back than any other television program I've, I've ever done, ever been on. Like everybody was having fun. And that's alone is, is very unusual. Everybody was having a good time and, and, um, and, and getting things done as well. It was just a, this wonderful, artistic, well-oiled machine. Um, and I think that it's because the leadership there was just, they're, they're just so lovely, just so uh, good to their people that it kind of trickled down and everybody was just like, you know, comfortable and did their best. And that that's that was what the atmosphere was like both times. The first one was uh, Greg Nicotero was my director, and I worked with Justin Long and Darcy Camden. And our segment was called what was it called? Late night. I have to go back and check it out. I saw the I saw the episode, Late but I night, can't remember what? the segment. Light of the Living Talk Show. Night of the Living Talk Show. That's right. Yeah. And then the second one, um, my director was uh, Joe Lynch. And I was starring, um, well, I was a love interest with uh, starring um, King Batch. Oh, okay. Yeah, Andrew Batchelor. He's, um, he's a big comedian, um, famous from TikTok. Really good actor, really funny guy. Well, Greg Nicotero, you know, most people know him from The Walking Dead. Um, and he was, he's was he been to Days of the Dead a couple times in Atlanta as a uh, spectator. So he came around to my table one day and I talked to him for a few minutes. So he's a pretty, you know, I, I haven't talked to him like you have, obviously. He directed you, but uh, he seemed like a pretty cool, laid back guy. So how was he to, uh, to, to act for? Oh, wow. Just a delight. It was such a pleasure working with him. Like he was just so happy. Like, you know, you have to be really quiet while the take is going on. So some of the time I was just like, did he like it? And then he'd be like, cut, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, oh, I guess he liked it. Sweet. You know? Um, yeah. That, like I said, is very unusual. It's just it, it, in the best way. So uh, I asked this of mu musicians on the music, on the music podcast, but I'm going to ask it a different way with you. Living or dead, what actor, actress, or film director, and you can take it anywhere you want, who would you like to work with that you haven't worked with? You know, if they're dead, you can't work with them, but who would you like to work with, and who would you like to work with now? Um, I would have liked to work with Alan Rickman, and I would like to work with Brenda. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so who were some of your influences coming up when you got into acting? I don't think we talked about that a couple of years ago. We talked about horror influences, but, uh, wh who are some of the actors and directors you looked up to, uh, when you got into this, you know, when you got that bug to, to act? Well, I've, I've been acting since I was very young, since I was three years old, I've been in theater and oh, wow. yeah, 17 since I was, uh, in film. And so my tastes have changed. Obviously, they've matured. Um, so, like, I guess at first, I well, one one that stuck with me throughout was Helen and Bonham Carter. I always adored her um, as as a very young person, and and now, um, yeah, I I really love Tilda Swinton. Um, yeah, I just I just love watching her. I could watch her all day. Recently, uh, well, a, a few years ago, I worked with this actress named Danielle Deadweiler, and she s recently starred in the movie Till. Okay. And I think she might have been nominated for an Academy Award for it. Um, incredible actress. So she's one of those people that I could watch all day long and never get bored. And um, but now I, I find myself being inspired a lot. I, I've been watching a lot of older movies like, for example, last night. I think it was last night we watched spasms and um there was this guy named uh, excuse me this very famous actor <laughs> oliver reed was in it and i remember watching <laughs> this guy him, this, you know this is this just guy. random it's a brit i don't know and um <laughs> I, yeah uh, uh, i can't keep, try to keep it classy um and uh he uh, was just to. brilliant to watch you know brilliant lovely lovely to watch and um i'm I'm gonna try to watch some more of his stuff and whatever you do do not watch any of his um 
it, I mean, if, if, if you really like his work, don't watch any of his interviews. <laughs> they kind of ruin it for you a little bit. Okay. Okay. Not really, a little bit, a little a little bit. Okay. I'll, <laughs> I'll make a note of that. Uh, so I have shutter subscriptions and subscription, uh, subscription to screen box. So I'll, I'll go back and watch some of those old eighties movies. So, um, do you find yourself, you just talked about spasms. Do you find yourself going back and kind of watching collections and things from certain time periods to, to, yeah. I don't know, to motivate yourself? Yeah. Yeah. I think what stood out for spasm with spasms with me was that it kind of had the atmospheric quality that dark circles has. Hmm. And I found the story to be really compelling. Um, and uh, didn't love the ending, but I, I really, really loved it up until then. And I mean, I was thinking, wow, this is going to be one of my favorite movies. Um, and man, I'd like to remake it. I don't know who would play Oliver Reed's character. Yeah, mm, I don't but know. That'd be, that'd be tough to, hard oh, shoes geez. to fill. But I can't I even thinking, think. Okay, I, I think Matt Berry could do it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. I, I think he'd slay at it. I mean, it might be more funny, but um, <laughs> yeah, I was thinking, uh, yeah, just thinking about it today. That's who yeah. I'd pick so, right now anyway. Well, I'm going to bring up something that's really on topic today, and it uh, there's been trailers out, and it's going to come out in June, um, and it's the new remake of The Crow. I don't know if you're a Crow fan, if you've seen the 1994 movie, uh, but uh, Bill Skarsgård is the playing Eric Draven in the 2024 version. Have you seen that trailer by chance? I have, and I found it to be exceptionally sad and beautiful. Mm. And um, I'm going to watch it, but I think that movie is going to break my heart. The first one did. Oh, yeah. So sad. Um, but but yeah, exquisitely well done. I, I don't think it needed to be remade, but I'm sure it'll be a fun watch. Yeah, yeah I'm in that camp. And when I, I because I love Brand, I love Brandon Lee's take on it. And, you know, that movie's almost like. Uh, I don't know. I almost worship that movie. I love it so much. It's in my top two. And uh, when I when I heard they were making a remake with Jason Momoa, and then they had a couple other actors attached, I'm like, ah, man, nah, nah. I was whining and bitched about it. But then I I saw the still shot of Bill in the tats, and I'm like, eh, I don't know if I'm sold on this. And then I saw the trailer, and I'm like, okay, I would I would really like this movie. I think if it were called something else, mm. if it wasn't in that lineage and called the crow if you made it something else i think i would be all in but i digress you know i, no, I can't <laughs> you, you make a very good point there there needs to be more original content and people need to get behind it and support it yeah because all of these remakes um i think i think everyone the collective consciousness is now bored of it yeah. and and it's hard to get behind for them even when it's as gorgeous as that trailer you know still people are going to bitch and moan about it because because they're tired of that, um, and yeah. and they they feel they feel manipulated and tricked, and and they are being, you yeah. know, yeah. So yeah, original content like Dark Circles. Dark Circles. <laughs> We're gonna watch <laughs> Dark Circles. Dark Circles. So, uh, like I said, I'm not pinning you down for a release date or anything, but we're thinking late summer, maybe early yeah. summer. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, late summer. Um, late I summer. think that uh, my my VFX and my post sound design should be done by that with you. Okay, cool, cool. Well, as soon as it drops, you know, uh, definitely shoot me a message on Instagram. I'll do a, I'll do a little podcast on nothing but that, just to let everyone know that listens to me. It's out now, and this is where you can find it. So hopefully, it'll hit some streaming services. Hopefully, you'll have some physical media they can go pick up at some point. Uh, but don't want to speak for you because I don't know how you're distributing it, but uh, whatever format we can get it in, we're going to watch it. Awesome. Yeah, I don't know yet either. So, but th but there are going to be physical copies. Awesome, awesome. Well, you've been a little busy on the uh, on the uh, well. I don't know if you've been super busy on it, but on the um, on the circuit, the uh, oh geez, the conventions. I'm a writer, and conventions slip my slip my mind. So, I was at Days of the Dead this year. Have you been to any conventions in the last couple of years? And you know, where are you going? Are you going to be at any? Yeah, yeah, I've I've done a couple. Um not a not a extremely large amount, but um I think uh the next one I'm supposed to do is in Danville, Danville Comic Con in Kentucky. Oh, and nice. I I 
just recently did uh, Vet City Con, which was also in Kentucky, and uh, Bowling Green, and th th those should be a lot of fun. Um, the horror conventions are usually my favorite because I don't have to explain to people who I am at the horror conventions, at the comic cons. It's it's more like they're like, okay, um, who are you? <laughs> I was just like, that's fair. I'm at a comic. Uh, well, no. <laughs> Hannah's amazing at uh, horror conventions, and uh, a couple years ago, she signed this DVD for me. So if you go see her at a convention, you know, she has things on her table that she will sign, and uh, she'll, you know, she'll do that for you. But uh, I love the way you sign this. I like you, Charlie, and if you've seen Siren, you know exactly what that means. So if you haven't seen Siren, what's wrong with you? You need to go check it out. But before you check this out, you check out VHS because she plays the same character. I did ask you this a couple years ago. Um, I love this character. Would there ever, ever in your brain be plans to play this again? Uh, be in another Siren movie? People ask me that all the time. And um, it's really not up to me. The, the franchise is owned by, uh, well, the character itself is owned by um, Bloody Disgusting. So, right. yeah, if they want to do it, which, I mean, I don't see why they wouldn't want to. There's there's a lot to to explore there with that character. It's it's a fascinating world that she's from. And, yeah, yeah, lots of fun stuff they could do. And if they wanted me to revisit the character, I absolutely would. Jeez, yeah. I, I, yeah, well, I love the character. I mean, it it seems to me, especially with the way it ended, too, and I don't want to give away the ending or anything for the people who haven't seen it, but go check it out. You can find it on Amazon. You can pick up a DVD somewhere. You know, I'll pick this up on Amazon or eBay or somewhere like that. And uh, But the story is so good, and it, and it fleshes out what you saw in VHS because in VHS, you know, all you saw was what you saw. You didn't know where she came from or where she'd been and uh but this fleshes out a little more but it still leaves a lot of questions which to me i would love to see another movie kind of explaining more backstory um but you did an amazing job in this and it's, it's an awesome movie Kudos. thank you Thanks. <laughs> and i i do remember asking you last time about challenges on that movie if you had any and we talked about that already but that was an amazing movie and you were super physical in it and uh I just can't uh, talk about that one enough. And the other two I want to mention again um, is The Unwanted. Uh, I like that movie quite a bit and Hold Me. And Hold Me is still a movie I think about. So for, guy, for the people who haven't seen Hold Me, go check that out. It was a very emotional film. Um, and you have some really great acting chops. So, I, you know, this is a Hannah Fearman love fest. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, both of, both of those movies, the um, the unwanted and hold me, are probably two of the hardest emotional, emotionally speaking, movies that I've ever acted in. It was yeah. it was grueling. Um, yeah, filming hold me, I literally ran out of tears. Like I still wanted to cry, but I was so dehydrated <laughs> from crying <laughs> that I just like I got nothing, guys. I I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. It... Well, Hold Me was, was sad and beautiful at the same time. I mean, the things your character was doing in that movie, um, you know, it it made me cry too. I'm not going to lie. So, Thank you, yeah. But yeah, she's, she, Hannah is the real deal. The real deal. That that was uh, that was actually written and directed by T. Snyder. And he produced it as well. And he edited it. He's, wow. <laughs> and he never made another movie after. And I, I'm- I know, I know. I guess he he was just like, okay, I did that. I'm gonna go be a genius somewhere else. I, I don't know. He's amazing. I haven't, I haven't, yeah, heard anything out of him. Um, gosh, that was when was that? Two two thousand. Yeah, it's been a it's been a minute. Yeah, I, I don't remember what the date was, but uh, you know, before I talked to you the, on the first podcast, uh, I watched it and I was like, I think I might have messaged you on Instagram. I was like, damn, really? <laughs> that, that was so excellent. sad. Yeah, it was sad. You. It was sad. <laughs> All right. Well, we've talked about dark circles. Is there anything else you want to mention about that particular movie? You know, we we talked about what it's about and hopefully when it's coming out. Um, is there anything else you want to put out there to the public so they can uh, uh, even, you know, get more prepared to see it? 
Yeah, I don't know. I've talked about it so much. I'm not really sure what I've said and what I haven't, but, um, yep. but yeah, we're thinking by the end of the year and yeah, it's, it's going to be pretty. Um, we had very little VFX, but for the VFX is finally coming in and it looks great. Awesome. And uh, that that's been done by a group called autodidactic. And I couldn't be more pleased with those guys. They're fantastic. And um, yeah, yeah. Just keep an eye out for it. And um Oh yeah, and and for Bunker Heights as well. I that that is a completely different movie. That's that creature feature that you mentioned. That is, um, it's it's not just a horror movie. It's it's a an everything. It's comedy. It's 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 a thriller. It's a horror. It's there, a there's story there's a, of. <laughs> no, there's a there's a trailer out there for it, guys. Go check it out. I checked it out, and I'm really want to see it. I'm excited Thank to you. see it. And I'm excited yeah. to see. I'll be watching. Go check that out. You can watch that now, right? Uh, I'll just have yeah, to find you can. A... And actually, I still haven't seen that one. Oh, um, really? Yeah, I know. I need to see it. I'm really excited. I, I need to because I I was at that convention and people were coming up to me being like, well, "How come you don't have a poster of that?" And I was like, "Yeah, I, didn't, I forgot it came out." Yeah, I guess I got to get some. Oh, geez, and you haven't seen it, man. If I watch it tonight, I'll see it before you. How about that? <laughs> Tell me what you think. Uh, I will. I will. Yeah. I will. All right, Hannah. It was so nice to have you on the show again. Um, what I want to do now is try to be quiet. I know I talk too much, but uh, if you want to promote anything, tell anyone where they can go find you. I'm going to put all the links below so people can click on it. I know you have a website uh, and I think you have some signed stuff you can get there. Um, but whatever you want to promote right now, I'm going to shut up and let you talk. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's basically all the stuff we've been talking about, like Bunker Heights. It was written and directed by Drew Fortier. And um, you can follow me on, uh, let me see, mostly I'm on Instagram and sometimes I'm on Facebook and sometimes on X, but uh, the, they also have their own Instagram pages. So go to Bunker Heights. Um, it's got a it's got a poster of a city with a with a creature looming over it. And um, and yeah. Yeah, uh, you can also check things out on my website, which is hannahfearman.com. And um, also, yeah, my handle is always Hannah Fearman. I'm very boring that way. And that's that's really it. That's all I got. Thank you so much. Oh, that's that, that's cool. I'm going to put links to everything below. I'll put a link to the Bunker Heights Instagram page uh, to your website. Um, and I, I thank you so much for being on the show again and taking some time. I know you're very busy. So I, thank uh, you. I, I feel special for you even coming on and, and chatting with me for a little bit. So thank you so much. I'm never much. too busy for you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, hopefully I'll see you at some convention soon. Oh, yeah. And I am Charles Campbell, small town horror author. My latest book is called The Piano Witch. Yay. And uh, it came out last October. You can find it at valleyboypublications.com, also with links to my Facebook pages and Instagram and all that good stuff. Uh, and yeah, that's it. Thank you again, Hannah. And we'll see you next time on Horror 421, the podcast. Thank you. We hope you had a horrific time, lovelies. Thank you for tuning in to Horror 421, the podcast. Be sure to like us on YouTube and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts.